Welcome to another video documenting my learning about Cohesity. I'm Alistair Cook and this is my Cohesity cluster that you may have seen in previous videos. Running along looking fairly healthy at the moment with some backups running, some capacity used and lots of fun things going on. Now today I want to take a look at using views with Cohesity. Uh, Cohesity has this functionality of being a file server as well as being a backup application. And one of the use cases for this is that you can use Cohesity as the backup destination for your existing backup software and get that scale out storage cluster as the, the destination when you initially deploy out Cohesity and then progressively start using Cohesity's backup capabilities to replace your existing backups. But you don't need to do a, a straight swap out if all you need is more capacity to store your existing backups, here it is, or if you've got to retire it out. Built into the Cohesity platform is this idea of being a file server, both as a destination for backup data, but also potentially just as a general purpose file server. And let's take a look at how that works. It's configured here in the platform section under views. And we create a view, which is a file share. Give it a name. So we're going to create a file share just called data here. Uh, it lives in the default storage domain with dejuf and compression turned on. I only have the one storage domain and my understanding is that's the best practice for Cohesity as well. Quality of service uh, policy. So how much of the uh, solid state capacity should I be using with this? Therefore, what sort of performance should I expect? And I think I want this to be a dev test high performance. I haven't spent any time looking at these QoS policies. Maybe I should, but that sounds like one that's going to give me reasonably high performance. All right, then we've got a protocol for this view. Is it going to be NFS only? The NFS view is what's used for the instant mass restore. So well, the instant restore to vSphere is that a NFS data store is created off the Cohesity cluster for this restore. So that's one of the functionalities that was important in Cohesity. You can choose to make it a Windows file share only, so SMB, or have it as an S3 compatible bucket only. Something else to note that when we have ingestion through NFS and SMB, the S3 is view only. So we can't make changes from the S3 interface, but this is not an unusual way of using a multi-protocol platform that has NFS for ingestion and S3 for the consumption side. Possibly not something you'd do with Cohesity, but it's certainly something I've seen on very large scale NFS and SMB solutions. Got a case sensitive view, let's, let's stick with case, case sensitivity and then come down and have a look at the advanced settings down here. So the security is something that I always want to take a look at and the SMB permissions are turned on which is good and we have an owner which is the local administrators group and then we have the everyone group has got full control and I'm never very happy with an everyone group having full control so I'm going to remove that one and add a principle in here. Now this authentication comes from my domain. This cluster is joined to my Active Directory domain. That allows me to use domain groups. And if you wanted to check how that works, take a look at my blog post. So I'm going to add domain admins to be full control. And then I'm going to also add domain users and allow them read write. So this is going to be a general purpose file share. Security is going to be, you know, this is primarily going to be accessed by Windows users, so I'm going to use NTFS as the, the file system type, and NFS is going to be controlled through that. So that lets me set up the security. What else have we got in here? Dejupe and compression, we'll leave that. Uh, let's have some logical quota on here. So let's set a maximum storage consumption for the share this view of 100 gigabytes. I think that's a reasonable amount. I had, I think, 200 or so gigabytes of free space on this storage domain. Browsable is OK. Encryption is off. Yeah, that's OK. Antivirus I don't have installed, so that has to be off at this point. So we'll create that view. And now we have the default share called data. So I can copy that path. I can grab myself a new Windows Explorer window and paste it in here and it pops up with authentication. Now even if I put my valid credentials in here, all right, even if I put valid credentials in there it's failing. This is not in fact a check for credentials that's failing, it's a networking check. So if we go back to views there's this thing called SMB authentication and global whitelists. 
And this allows me to choose to allow a particular subnet access to this share. So if I put my entire lab subnet in here, read write is allowed. That no root squash is really important if I'm going to allow access through NFS. So if vSphere is going to access this share, it's important. This is a, a subnet that contains my ESX server, so I will allow that. And this is the DLab subnet. So if I now allow that, if I pop back down here to this Explorer window and again paste in that URL, now I can get access to that data share. And if I pop back and browse, I can see the data share is accessible as if it was a normal file share in here. So if I create myself a folder in here, our data folder, I'm currently logged on as a domain administrator. And consequently, if I come in here, I should be able to change the security settings in here. So if I edit in here and add, let's see if I've got an Alistair account in here. Yeah, I've got an Alistair account. We'll add Alistair in here and give Alistair explicitly modify rights, just like we would on any other NTFS file system. So it looks like it, it behaves really nicely as a, an NTFS file system. And we can get some access into that folder and, and maybe I've got my other window here with a whole bunch of data in it. Let's just grab the whole Cohesity folder and copy it in and chuck in there a few. Oh, look at this. Can't bring all of my properties across. So I can't bring all of the uh, NTFS file system properties that I'm bringing from this file share across. I bring everything with without properties and let's bring three gigs worth of data across. That'll take a few minutes to copy across. Let's take a look back at our view and see what we can see. We have our data view in here. It will slowly be filling up. We can see shares in here. So the other thing that we can do in here is we can protect the view. All right, so now, because I've got a file share that's containing unique original data, I need to do some data protection for that. So I can come in here and choose a protection policy to apply to the data that's in this view. So this is a data view protection is the name of my protection job. It's protecting the, the file share, the view called data with the silver protection policy. So if we hit OK on that one, now we've got a protected icon up here, the little shield shows up. That seems to be propping along. Uh, it's going to take a little while to populate out. Once again, it's that issue of copying from and to the same storage locations in the lab. All looks to be fairly good. Incidentally, the documentation for the Cohesity platform does include information about managing views, so information here about creating and setting up the authentication, setting up multiple shares, and all of the configuration that you need to understand. Good documentation in here, capabilities to build out using this. Now that I have the file share created, I think I will leave it for a little while and see the protection happen and make sure that the data protection shows up in there. Let's, let's create a another share in here called users and I'm going to make that high as well. I'm going to make that SMB only and I'm going to do the same. Edit the permissions so remove the everyone and add domain admins to allow full control. And then I'm going to have domain users. And just on this folder, I'm going to allow read, write, and add. Cool. And then I wanted to set a quota as well. We're going to set a logical quota on this one, we'll stick with the default of 20, so we'll create another file share. And while we're in here, we'll protect this file share as well. Users of view protection. Right, and we'll back that up also with silver. Oh, so that's 
gives me two different file shares and if I pop back in here I should be able to find that through CO cluster and now I've got a user's share as well. Cool, multiple shares independent authentication and security on those, those seem to be all good and slowly we'll be filling up that um, logical quota, the actual capacity that's been used. It's going to take a little while, it looks like it's going to take a while to get that three gigs of, of data across. So I'll let that run and then we'll come back and take a look at it after the silver protection policy has kicked in and uh, take a look at uh, how everything looks after a little while. Uh, that time will pass fast for you, it'll be a little slower for me. Now it's the following day, backup jobs completed and everything is happy, data has arrived on the share successfully and so I can open up the user guide for this version of the Cohesity platform. And remember this is where we were going and having a look at the administration of views and configuration and control and those kinds of things. So definitely read the documentation as you're going through this process yourself. In terms of the view itself, well we can see the views now show the consumed capacity and we can see that my data view, my data share, has got a significant amount of data on it now. If we go through and take a look at the protection jobs, we can see the protection jobs for each of the views and if we take a look at the view data protection job here, we can see that it has run successfully and it has made those backups successfully. We can see that has, has happened. If we look at the most recent run, we can see the task that occurred. That it took almost no time and there were no changes to, to back up at that point. If we go back to an early run and look at the 10.19am uh, run, we can see that it didn't take terribly long and the 3.2 gigs of, of data came across. So that's good. I guess one of the things we might want to do is a recovery and the recovery will be a recovery of files or folders and I've usually gone this way into the protection job and looked for protection jobs that have the word data in them and we find my data protection job is in here and so from that we can find the folder and the individual files and we can choose to either download directly or add to a restore path. So we can save and continue and say this is what I want to do, here's the restore point that I want to work from. Here's some credentials to actually put the files back into the original location as well. I won't go through the restore process because I haven't actually deleted anything out of there. But what we can see is the ability to have our file shares sitting on our Cohesity cluster with NTFS compatible file system uh, permissions if we need those as well as we can have the access through both S3 and NFS file sharing on here. We could potentially use this as a location to store maybe clones of decommissioned virtual machines. That would be a fairly normal thing to do as part of a virtual machine decommissioning process is to back it up as a final archive and then delete it out of your primary storage, leaving only the, the copy that's on secondary. And this would be a great location for this. Lots of use cases around this and very flexible functionality. I'll be having a, a bit more of a look over time at how to use this Cohesity Views and some of the newer functionality that's coming out with newer releases. So join me on my continuing quest to learn more about the Cohesity data platform, both here on YouTube and my channel, as well as on my demitas.co.nz blog, and of course Cohesity.com for all of the content produced by the Cohesity team.